Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Blue Stream at the 2013 Winter Championship event. Dallas, Texas is where we are. Awesome venue, awesome crowds. I'm Axel Tostro, my in control. Yes. How you doing? I'm good, and I'm glad that MLG always comes to Dallas. The crowd turns out in force. The LOL side has been thunderous. They are they really been. excited. The Call of Duty center stage has been great. Um, of course, completely amped up. No, I'm not gonna make that joke. Uh, and then the StarCraft 2 crowd, doing a great job. I, I mean, I'm really happy about this. I was a little bit worried that with no open bracket, we wouldn't have quite the crowd that we normally do, but they're filling the seats. There's people standing over there. Yep. There's standing ovations at the mini stage. It is wonderful it's to be back in tournament season. Yeah, uh, again, if you have never had a chance to make it to a live event, if you're in the Texas area, there's still tomorrow, Championship Sunday. Tomorrow's Get on your family key. cattle. Yeah. Use the tractor. Pull the, the cattle out of your farm. Stared. And then, uh, what? <laughs> it's okay. Texas, when I make so this I, joke, I kind of take, I take that look, a little bit personally. Well, the guys you crossed, that, you, th there was a line. That I think you you cut. sure have crossed too many lines. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah. All right, and do the best Texan impression. I'm going to ask these guys if they're ready. The people who would actually be offended about that joke don't have internet, though, so I don't feel too terribly <laughs> bad. So it's, I'm safe. They're not actually that upset. Alien, alienizing? Alien? I don't know the word. Alienating? Alien? Is that what it is? It's a word outside of Texas, yeah. yeah I don't know. All right, Senna's ready. Yes. Waiting on confirmation from party. Of course, uh, a little bit of context if you're just now joining us. It's currently tied. One to one. Electric. Game number one. Parting a very one side to game two. Uh, a very nicely formulated seven gate all in. Of course, it depended on a lot of things going his way, and they did. Able to sneak that probe on his opponent's side of the map, able to deny overloads from scouting, and it all added up to Sen. Able to make seven gateways. Able to able to yeah. make the seven gateways. Um, and it all added <laughs> it all added, it all added up to Sen not knowing what right. was happening. Uh, of course, game number three is gonna be on Akalon Wastes. And I made that fly through. Did you like it? Did you actually? Yeah. You make those things? Yeah, the map editor. They're man. really good. Really cool. Well, you're like some kind of wizard to me now. I Dude, can, the map editor. I can barely host a game. It, what do you, <laughs> you freaking make It's them? a lot of fun. No, people look, think about the map editor and like it's so intimidating, right? But it's it's actually a lot of fun to play with. So I encourage you guys, if, well, you're, the, if you're into yeah. map making, if you're into, like, I, I want to see Machinima. I want to see a Marine, and I want to see in control of voice acting that Marine <laughs> and, ma and telling a story, right? Yeah, I'd do it. It's, it's doable in the map editor, guys. Please try to take advantage of the tools Blizzard has given to you because it, it's completely awesome. But back to this tournament in the bottom right hand location. We have the Red Protoss player who fell down in the first game, but was able to formulate a nice seven gate all in in game number two to take down his opponent, which means the series is tied one to one. He is representing SK Telecom T1. He is partner. And there he is. Uh, best of five all tied up. And in the top left hand side, formerly of Team Fnatic. And before that, in Brood War, I'm going to drop a knowledge bomb on you. He was from Team Templars of Twilight. Wow. TOT. A former teammate of mine, it is Sen. And Sen was in game he, two. Oh, go ahead. Was he a Zerg? Sorry. Yes. You, you said Zerg. Templars yes. of. Is that, that seems like a Protoss name. Uh, yeah, right? it's, it's more just epic. Okay. It was epic. It was a. They had a German founder slash leader, Mondragon. A lot of people might have heard of him. He's yes. moved on to focus on school. But he is a legendary Brood War player who went on to do great things. And his team was a. Non-sponsored, we were not salaried, collection of guys that like to play the game at the highest level, That's and awesome. Sen was a part of that. That is awesome. Big part of that. Isn't, that seems a little random to me. He's, like, he's from Taiwan, right? It is It is random, to be honest with you. There's, there's a few guys that were pretty good from there, but for the most part, um, I don't know. That's just not where Brood War players got good at StarCraft, huh. to put it lightly. Um, but the team had Polish players, German players, it had a German background. Oh, I was the awesome. first American wow. outside of, well, was I the first American or was it Froz? It was, no, it was, I don't know. Anyways, I was one of the first Americans. Rhett was on the team. Rhett was nice. a teammate of mine for a long time. Um, sorry, to, sorry to interrupt you from, from no, go ahead. the beginning as well. You were talking about game number two. And I oh, I was just going to do the caster thing where <laughs> we were like, hey, I want a game with, with a beautiful strategy. Yeah, I don't know. I had no, I, like, I, love, I love hearing history like that. Like yeah. uh, when that video came out with, you know, Artosis and Day 9 at that. that uh, oh, I got teary out of that stuff. Oh, like, yeah. That's amazing. I love that stuff. I wish I wish more of it would, would be out there. If, if someone could, like, you know, put the hazy, uh, like, Instagram vision oh, on it. And, wow. Like, slow it down a few times and yeah. add a little bit of soft music. But joking aside, that is actually incredible. Because at the no, time, 
just the stuff Sean and Nick said to each other that would then later become like the most harrowing and like emotional things ever ten years later. Good video. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, what would you look up on YouTube? Oh actually? gosh. No. Um, WC 2005, yeah. Day 9, and Artosis There you maybe. go. That's what you search. Go for it. It's very, very good. A lot of it, the thing that was really impactful about that for me was like, I've always heard all these rumors and stories about all this stuff about, you know, Tasteless Artosis Day 9. Yeah. And then it all kind of popped up there. Like, Tasteless yeah. told that story about how he got into casting. Yep. And lo and behold, literally the, the quote was in there. Like, of him yep. saying, I'm going to go see if they need casting help. And, that, and then that launched yeah. taste doses like, yeah. from that point it's forward. It's just, you guys, if you're if you're into StarCraft, if you're into the history, definitely check that out. You know so. what, actually, before we break away from this tangent, the of part course. that actually made me, I now remember what made me almost cry, was seeing and hearing the passion in Artos' voice when he was talking about he's got such and such opponent coming up. And it's he still really had hard. that. that yeah. Uh, he's like, yeah, I usually lose to him, but I've, you know, I've been training really hard. I'm really going to work on it. Then they interview him after he loses, and I'm like, mm, oh, my God, because... The one thing you can say about Artos is nobody in their right mind would ever question the fact that this guy loves StarCraft probably more than anybody else on the entire planet. Yeah. And it was true then and it's true now. And it's amazing to see that, hear that, and, and witness it uh, historically like that. Because he didn't know that video. I mean, the video had like 125 views before it became famous in StarCraft 2 for what was said during Brood War. I mean, yep. it's just amazing. But getting in this game right now right. is a nice way to spend six minutes. I, I yeah. will always talk about I Brood enjoyed, War. I enjoyed that conversation. <laughs> Uh, standard stuff from parting thus far. Mama Ship Core are going to move out with gateway units. That's the harass. It allows for slowlings to go down pretty quick and safe. Sen, on the other hand, did take his bottom third, which is interesting. Uh, a lot of Zergs will do that. They don't like the other one because, uh, I guess, with the rocks there, they can kind of get exposed. Yeah, if, if you, it's, it's, you have to actually make units to kill those rocks, yeah. which Zergs don't like to ah, do. Good point. There you go. Four, Instead of drones. Yeah. But it is gasless again. Um, he, well, gasless up until a certain point. We're, of course, at 54 supply plus. But he went gasless to three base, which means we don't have speed. He's going straight lair. Got away with it this game. Yeah. You're right, actually. Um, but, you know, that's because parting, he put down that very oh, fast there. So wow. it's looking very similar to game one. Dude, that's 25 seconds faster than the, the other fast nexus. Oh. Yeah. This is faster than fast. What does he actually have? Yeah, I, it's this is a map where you can definitely do this. Like you have the yeah. rocks, you have that choke point. Of course, you have that the mama core. I kind of like your yeah your version of, of that that name. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Which can <laughs> help defend against pretty much. Oh yeah, I mean, slow links it shuts it down. Yep. I mean, game number one told Harding that he doesn't have to worry about early aggression from Sen. Sen's not opening up gas. Gas is how Zerg gets aggressive in the early stage. We see 14 more links coming out, but guess what? Even with speed, with that wall in uh, at the third, they're not a threat. The cannon behind those three gateways would hold off. Literally, I did the math in my head, infinity links. Wow. It is a lot. That's impressive. Now, you know, we talked about the reaction from Sen in game one after seeing that, that third base. Yeah. Similar reaction here. Just adding on drones, you know, proceeding yep. with tech. Not terribly fast. Hold on. Oh. This is actually deja vu-ish. Yeah, because that hap that did happen on Cloud Kingdom, that Absolutely. exact thing. And then he put down a Twilight Council, he put down a Robo. Yeah. Um, actually worth noting, uh, no, okay, there is plus one attack on this uh, Protoss army, so he'll wait for plus two. Yep. But I want to see if he just throws down a Robotics Bay, um, or if he goes into some kind of like blink composition. You see Hydro Stand and Infestation Pit going down at the exact same time, and, and you use the word correct, or the phrase rather, deja vu, I mean, Yep. This is exactly game number one so far in Cloud Kingdom. Now, I'm wondering if we're going to see Templar from from Party because I uh, feel like Sen, you know, obviously what he did in game one it worked. Yes, I, I feel like that's what he's going to try to do on this. Map. Um, but the, the the question from there is, how does Parting change his play? Because of course, Parting was the one that came out on on the wrong end of, of that game. Yeah, and of course, didn't have the perfect unit composition, didn't have the perfect decision making. So. I liked your point about the Templar. I'm yeah. wondering if he's going to try to incorporate those this game. Assuming Send you know, goes down a similar route as he did in Game 1. Well, there's the Robotics Bay being added to the other four gateways. Is another pair, or excuse me, another four gateways. Yeah. So for a total of eight, it looks like it's just going to be the same. He's going to be very content with three bases. And then once he starts shoving around with Stalker Colossus, he then takes his fourth, perhaps fifth. But one thing I do like about Parting is he's so active out on the map. With that recall, you can do this. You're not yes. worried about getting surrounded and losing these units. If you kill a queen, some creep tumors, and then you recall back, you are successful. So that's exactly what he's looking to do. But if you don't have to recall, then you won't. He's going to pull back here. Course, Loving yeah. the crowd here at Dallas. Something exciting going on over there. Can't wait to hear what that is. 
Um, Swarm host I upgrades. think MVP made an SCV. They're that crazy. Oh, they're in a crazy game. Yeah? All right, all right. All right. Well, you guys should have both streams open, so you know what's going on. Yeah. We'll um, just have to hear about it later. You know, and I love your point about, you know, Harding just being out here. Because think about as a Zerg player. You don't yeah. know what's coming with this, right? So you always have to be, like, scared of what's going to happen. Is he going to invest everything? Oh, hold on. These Swarmos might be taken oh, off guard nice here. Transfuse. There is an Observer. Oh, that the, the, the Swarmos is going to end up dying. Good force fields. But these force fields are... They're not win force fields, they're don't kill me force fields, right? Like, that, that's not him winning the fight, that's yeah. him not losing it. So he did pick off a Swarmos, which is nice, but now Sen spots that fourth. He's got a Spire finishing, he's got his 2-2 two, two, uh, range attack upgrades incoming. Actually, just right now it's the, sh it's the Carapace, but soon to be, a, I imagine, range attack. And he's sitting on his four bases, and those four bases were pretty darn good they if were. you guys watched game number one. He wasn't really concerned with doing what a lot of Zergs think they need to do, which is to have, like, 15 bases more than the Protoss. Yeah. This game, I mean, we talked, we theorized about you know that bank he accumulated, and I think this game we're going to keep a close eye on that that Eunice lost tab because yeah. we talked about how efficient Sen was with the army that he had, which enabled him to accumulate such a bank where he didn't need to keep building units like Harding had to do. So that's something I'm definitely going to be keeping a, a very close eye on throughout this game. Swarmhost pulling back. One thing that Sen did that I thought was pretty cool too is a lot of Zergs uh, push out with the Swarmhost, take center map, and that's where they. Try to draw attention. Sen was totally content with having spine crawlers and choke points for his swarm host to kind of lurk behind. Uh, however, he's out of position here. The stalkers and Gloss are going to move forward. The force field is going to be so powerful on that ramp. There they are. Just a few locusts coming down, but otherwise, this base is left alone with that Protoss army. Yeah, those force fields just meant to keep Sen's main army away, keep those locusts away. Just wants to snipe this base at the top, and he's going to be successful. The hatchery is going to fall, and that's a great move for parting. That's something he wasn't able to do in game number one. Uh, Sen just not able to get yeah. the, the spine colors down there, not able to get his Swarm Host positioned correctly and, and Parting taking advantage. You're absolutely right, and I think that's Parting kind of realizing the game that is afoot. If he can keep this Zerg player fighting for a fourth, I don't care how cost-effective that army is, it should not be able to keep up with Parting. The other thing here, too, with Parting is I feel like there it is, Temple Archives go down, yes. goes down quite a bit earlier, and if you are feedbacking those Vipers and stopping them from tugging your Claws in cost-free, you're probably enjoying a, a much more equal game, if I might say so myself. So we're going to see more. Oh, Swarmos not even burrowed. That's actually really scary. The Swarmos is going to be unburrowing and retreating back behind the He might just die right here. Uh, yeah, this is definitely scary. Um, he only has Hydras here underneath. Doesn't have that monstrous Roach count that he had in game number one. And Parting has those Colossi, which yeah. pretty much shred everything that Sen has. I mean, there's no. Cor okay, Corruptors are just now being added on, but is it a little too late? I think it is. The Stalkers and Colossus are marching forward. The Swarm Hosts themselves are looking to be targeted down here in just a moment. Not enough Locusts coming out to make this Protoss think twice about fighting. Wow. Here comes reinforcements. The third Colossus, more Stalkers, and Harding has just picked up Heart Sen. It's two to one. Wow. So a lot of interesting things to talk about in that game, especially compared to game one, because again, it, it opened up very similarly. Yeah. Um, you know, Parting was just able to make sure that Sen never got to that comfort zone where he had those spines lining outside of his natural. He had those spines lining all yes. around the fourth base. You know, we saw the, the, I think it was the fourth base there from Sen, very exposed. The force fields went down on the ramp. There was nothing there to defend it, and that's a lot of drones. That's a, that's a hatchery forfeit, and all of a sudden, there yep. it goes, most of your economy. Well, think about Cloud Kingdom. I mean, you're going up ramps to attack things like the natural area, not even the natural itself, and we saw Sen Anchor that location with spine crawlers. I'm talking about Cloud Kingdom, by the way. Right. And that allowed him to delay that attack, not doing any damage at all. But then you talk about his fourth base. He was able to focus on that because that other spot was so locked down. On this map, with his fourth getting picked off because he hadn't uh, taken down those rocks, he hadn't yeah. had the location secure for himself, that opened up everything. And every time Parting moved back and forth, he was getting the favorable exchange because Sen was one step behind. And that meant that Aklan Waste is a place that Sen's going to put in his rearview mirror and look to the future because he needs better map help if he's going to play this style. This is the best of five, guys. Parting is currently up two to one. That means if he wins one more, he will advance to the round of eight of the 2013 MLG Winter Championship. Sen, he must win two in a row. We'll find out what happens next after a quick break. Don't go anywhere.